I get nervous when I'm in front of people like this. That's one of the reason I really don't like to demonstrate a whole lot. <laughs> but right after I demonstrated that Tannehill in 2009, Wayne Cole took me a picture, and I know some of them know Wayne. But, uh, it was this little ring across to it. He said, You like to do the pass route? I did a bunch of other Tannehill here. He said, Can you do this? So, I took it as a challenge and I did it. The first one messed up on the measurements real bad and I could the egg shape and stood around. But I laid it on my table and took the picture sideways so you couldn't tell it was egg shape and sent it to me. Of course I had to do another one to get my measurements right. But uh, and at the time I didn't know we were gonna do this because this was just done this year and but this center circle is just like this. And uh, Mark Asprey does this. I think that's what he pronounced his name. And I didn't see it till after I'd made, I didn't see him make one till after I'd made probably three. And uh, he does it just a little different. He does forward welding. And if you're going to forward weld it, that's, that's fine too, but everything's still the same way. You don't make it longer, you don't make it shorter. If you're going to forward weld it, you've got to make a small scar here because it's got to go through a hole here. And then when you overlap it and forward weld it back out to its original size, it will be the same length as it is. You just turn and touch each other. Because uh, it's the same amount of material. What? The center ring, it meets in one of the, the one of the holes on the outside. And like I say, you can forward weld it, but I'm not. Uh, so, this piece is four inches to the inside, and it's four inches to the inside because that's what side pipe I had when I first did this. Uh, to get that circumference, you got to add the, the, the diameter of this plus one time, added, add the stock size one time to it and smoke out the pipe. I added it twice the first time, that's why I got the egg shape. But, uh, you divide that by two, but you come in from each end. This is about 14 and a half. It's just it's a little bit over 14 and a half. You don't have pie stuff in it. It's, it's got to be an odd measurement. But so you take half of that and half it, come in from the ends and put your center on it. And I messed up on this one. It's got four marks on it. But I, when I first marked it, I marked it for a five-eighths hole. And after I got through, I realized it's got to be the square hole on the diamond here. So I but it'll never be seen what we do. So this, the, there's a hole here and a hole here, and this comes up and it'll meet up in the, in the inside the bar. And in this bar, you know, it's just it's got three holes, got two rounds, and one, uh, one square on the diamond. Uh, inside of that mark is four inches, the inside hole. What I do, I used to use Tom Clark's method, which I'll leave these here and I'll make copies of them. This is for a half inch and a three eighths, so you have to just you know, go on five eighths, you just need to go up. He, he used a slip, which uh, cut through. After I went to Lyle Wynn's hammer class, I started using the, the slot function that knocks the slug out. Uh, you still lose very little steel. The hole seems to be cleaner. It doesn't leave a rag on the inside if you hit everything just right. Uh, That's got all the, the angles on it, but these are just, these punches are flat and, and a little less than an eighth inch wide. Uh, for a five eighths hole, I use a five eighths wide slipper or punch, or whatever you want to call it, knock that punch. And on the, on the square, this, this is a, a couple thousandths bigger than three quarters, so the three quarter stop will go through there pretty easy. Uh, this way, it's, it's about seven eighths, corner to corner. And since we're going on the diamond, I'm using a seven eighths slot punch. Works good, it's what we did with this. Uh, this middle bar here, uh, it's, got, it's got 11 holes in it. We measured it before we started, we measured it when we got done, and it actually shrunk a quarter of an inch. <laughs> and uh, 
So Tom's things, th this paper here, he makes his uh, he makes his slitters. I think I'm not a machinist. Okay, so I'm gonna say five thousand, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's what it is. But you can look at that detail. He makes his uh, slitters five thousand wider than his uh, drift is, right or down the way you go. But in all my hole punchings, if you, what I figured, and this works for me, <laughs> if, you, if you're going to punch a 5 8 hole and you use a, a 7 8 slitter, because uh, French Whitaker's got a thing uh, for a 5 8, for a half inch square hole, he uses it, it's a little bit bigger than 7 8 slitter. Well, you got to upset that uh, to, to get it square, you know, from the end. So you lose a lot of uh, length on your bar. But I got to thinking, well, if I'm going to push this 5 eighths round through a bar and I don't want it to stretch or sink, shrink, if I, if I punch my hole wider than this, this bar is round, when I run this through there, the sides go out, and the ends pulling. Uh, if I punch it smaller than this, it stretches the sides and pushes the, the, the two pieces out away from each other because you're not gonna you're not gonna upset this right here once you got that slit in there with and with not backing up here. It's, just, it's gonna it's gonna push that hole apart. Or it's gonna if the hole too wide, it's gonna bring it to and that, that's just my theory. It works for us. It worked real good on this. <coughs> and, uh, so, well, I'm going to punch the square hole in the middle first, and then the rounds, and we'll let that cool and start on the round piece. While he's heating us up, the pages going around uh, on Facebook, some people have a forgery page. Those are on the page already. So, if you want to just get them off of that, you can. I'm trying to make this slow. I, I work by myself, so I work pretty fast when I'm at the shop. We didn't go real fast on this thing. It was a lot of head scratching. Where do you want to heat this up? Where do you want to heat this up? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I brought another kit of this, and it's already marked. Of course, it was marked wrong just like I did this one, but I did it the second time. But if I don't mess up, it'll be in the fire. Uh, iron in the hat. If I mess up, I might need a piece of it. Whoever wins it, we expect it to be a supper for the next meeting. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I did this for Jim Maxson when he's. Uh, <laughs> Gaysburg Museum in Huntsville, his shop. They tore his shop down and took it over there and rebuilt it. He asked me to demonstrate for him. So I did this, but we did a, a frame around it with the mortise and tenon. We mortise and tenon both the cross pieces. And uh, at that time, I was just putting one punch mark on, over here. And you, have, you punch this hole, bend it, and you stick it in the and then he punched his hole. Well, <clears throat> we got that far. Had this piece done, had this piece punched and bent. Well, I got on the wrong side of the hole when Ronnie was holding it for me. He sat down for some reason. Instead of getting, let the hole be away from me, I, I let it come to me and I punched the hole in the wrong place. I didn't realize it until we were bending it around and, and I was sitting here looking over this gig on the vise and, and I could tell that hole, you know, went through holes over here. I thought holes were over there. So I, luckily I had to take another piece. And uh, I just turned around and said, I made a mistake, I got a fix it. So we put the hard in the thing, heated it up, I just whacked it off started enough. And it turned out good because I finished right about the right time. You know. 
Clay Spencer came up to him after the talk with him, and he said, you're not like that father, you're a bit. And I said, well, I wanted to cry. I said, but I, I had to do it, you know, I told him I was going to do it. So. All right, if you have trouble finding these holes when you're looking, if you'll scratch it, a lot of times you'll get a, a piece of scale to fall down in them holes. I'll stop going to lose my heat here, but uh, I'll mark it anyway. Uh, Try to go to the center of the, of the hole right there when you get that slither yeah. right there. Try to stay, they're a little bit far apart, but I, I mark them. Say it makes me when the center punch, well, half my center punches, you know, the center of my center punches, say it makes, so it, it looks like I'm not in there, but I just center up between the two. And you can always fudge a little bit on this stuff. My, I make all my punches out of H13 because that's what Tom Clark did. I, I, I learned a lot from him back then. And the drifts are S7. They're an impact tool to see hit them harder. And uh, I think it's called D car. You know what that? S7. I'm not sure. They got they got two different S7s. One of them's D car. One of them's a, a mill finish. And the D car is like five thousand bigger than what it says it is. So it works real good for a drift because you need the drift to be a little bit bigger for a, uh, for a, for drifts. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you won't hold it long. You got to pull it up right there. Take a long look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, this, this part doesn't take a lot of heat right here. This is almost like a punch and die set. This, this is the bottom die, and of course this is a punch, and, and it's just going to shear itself out if I get right on top of it. Mess up. <laughs> 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 
No, because you try so hard not to let everybody know you just did it. Or not to know what you're terrified. Funny how you grab something hot and you get a cold chill up your spine. So the, the harder two you made right there, that was the not cheap, it's called resourcefulness. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I didn't realize that I was going to need it until after I bought the animal, and I saw everybody else had one on their hand. Like, <laughs> so I had one of mine. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
documentation under control over here. Do it in line with 
the top. Do you have a measure on the holes in the end? Well, there. Center to center, they're four and five eighths. Center to center, the round holes are four and five eighths. The diamond hole is center of those. Right. Four and five eighths.
reason I'm moving back and forth over this hole, I know some of you know, but uh, the same reason I made that small bolster there, so it won't suck my metal down. Just, if you leave it right in the center, it'll, it'll pull some of your metal down in that hole. And it's hard to keep it doing all that. Okay. It's all like that, but it, 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 it hates. How do you get this uh, circle in it? He's fixing to show you. That's next. You see how the bottom of the bar is bigger than the top? Because when you start pushing it down in there, it's pushing that metal down and out. And the only way to keep from that that I can find is to mark it on both sides, go about halfway, turn it over, go about halfway. A lot more trouble. Uh, the slitters don't seem to do that. Pass around all that. They, uh, they seem to. So how many of those, the pieces that you did right there, how many are required for to do a circle like that? Which circle? <laughs> uh, which circle? I mean, how many pieces do you like that do you have in this? This right here is just this center piece. Oh, just the center piece? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. This this second ring has got like 14 holes in it. Oh, okay. All right. And this one's just got two. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't have time to do that. Yeah, I thought I was going to go so far. Explain why you don't put your job here so smooth. Well, they're an air hardness tool steel, S7 and H13. And if they're red hot, it'll make them brittle and they'll break. They're useless. Uh, Steve Williams was using an H13 chisel one day and uh, he was cutting something quenching in water and he went to cut again and his edge rolled up and uh, couldn't figure it out because H13 doesn't usually soften up. Well, he called uh, Dave Smuck. He's a but he told him that H13 annuals at like 1200 degrees or something like that. I forget the exact number. So you need to soften a piece, piece of H13. You heat it up to just before it turns black and puts some water and it is soft. And, uh, and it works. I've done it. I drilled a piece one time and I was trying to make a chisel with it. We talk to people, especially the steel companies, they tell you you can't do it.
back when Ernie drilled them on. Uh, I can't give on 2009. I didn't mean, make on the I mean, yeah, but, but uh, he was using S7 for all, all of his chasing tools and all that. Somebody asked him about annealing it. He said it can't be done. Unless you got a special heat treat oven. Uh, Clay Spencer even spoke up and said, yeah, it's got to, got to hold this heat for so long. So, of course, I took that as a challenge. <laughs> I went home and was going to make some more rounded chisels like he was making. So I forged them out first. Of course, I couldn't file them. So at the end of the day, I put them in my gas forge and got them blistering hot, shut the door, cut it off, and went home. And the next morning, I could file them. And that was that set. Age 13, you went too far. It worked that time. It may not work again. It worked that time. Mark, there are a bunch of marks on this, same as what I'm Yeah, the same distance mark, But they're, uh, I believe, center of this hole, center of that hole is like seven and a quarter, maybe. And then half of that's from the center of this hole here. Would you recommend water or oil from this? Uh, did it work? When you're making oh, you did have a minute, but you know, uh, this is air cool. cool, cool. So the bending jig that you made down there, what is that, a piece of four inch? It's, it's four inch tube. The outside of Yeah, something like that. I had to brace the first one I made the tops of it in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you just drilled out the corners uh, to the center points on it? Yeah.
Yeah. That's fine. You look at it really closely from a light, you can see the answer looks Yeah. You could make them two at a time by cross drilling one piece of material and then Might cut it been, and then uh, bands all it up. Deeper than half the hole. Yeah. That would be a problem. I Start that in about here. Hardest part about
little wiggle in it this way. That's the worst thing about one of these, getting all that great. Right. So you're just letting the two ends of the round meet in the middle of the square bar. Yep. Yes, I need to do this. And if you measured like right, one of the circuits. <laughs> <laughs> you just need left. Heat's a wonderful thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
problem.
this much trouble back. Why do you have to come back? 
Quench the fat side or the thin side? Quench the Quench thin side. The thin side. I've actually moved hammer eyes okay. over no, 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 that no. I got a little off center and punch and doing the same thing. It worked good. Side, make this side open up a little better. Yeah, that's Thank you. 
flat. Shows it's only got two minutes of battery left. Did this one time and I didn't curl this in here first. Man, you talking about tough. Oh, I've never got to that case. The end around where it's easy to play.
Square bar. It's on this other anvil over here. Doing this job in a little gas forge, that's for sure. Huh? Said so you want to do this job in a little gas forge. I prefer coal anyway. <laughs> you, said, you said you was going to get done too quick. Just do it again. I just think it takes better than to get burned and pulled out. Get one of those sparkly pictures. Yeah. That would make you too happy. Yeah, we should keep firing up a speed scudder one time. It's like a double. It's still that big. That's it. Funny how that always seems to happen when you're like two heats away from being finished.
That's an elusive piece of bar. Several pieces of that around, don't you? That's one that just blows up. Where's all the mustard? Well, this is what you want. I'm going to put it back on that jig and run that drift through there. Hammer on it like that and close the inside and hold it up and hammer around. I'm gonna put the centerpiece in and then put it back on there. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna 
I'm going to drive the drift to the outside pieces. I may not be getting it out once I get it in there. We'll figure out something. <laughs>
I think it's oak. What is that? You don't want to think he's a smart aleck if we didn't know him better, would Come to my shop. I keep you busy about a week. <laughs> floor. Yeah. Can you see your floor? That's me. Either. Don't tell them you can't do anything. 